As a hypnotherapist, a lot of people ask me about insomnia. And I have to say that not only have I experienced insomnia in my life, I've also helped a lot of people deal with insomnia. Now, there are many different factors that we need to take into account. There's many different forms of insomnia. One of the most basic is the inability to get to sleep at night. And this can be caused by a number of different factors. The most prevalent factor for people who just lie in bed awake, thinking, 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 is the fact that they probably haven't got a lot of exercise and their body is not tired. Perhaps their mind is tired. Their mind might even be overtired, but because they haven't, exercise their body, their body's awake. And quite often people kind of fight with themselves. There's a part of them that knows exercise is important and that knows they should go for that long walk or go to the gym or do some kind of cardiovascular exercise in order to tire the body out. But there's another part of them that gets home from work and just wants to flake out on the couch. And so there's this kind of war that happens within them. And the stronger part, usually the lazier part wins. And through hypnosis, we can reinforce the power of the other part. We can find out where this conflict came from. We can explore it in many different ways, provide suggestions at the subconscious level for overcoming it. So hypnosis can really help these people by embarking on a new lifestyle, giving them the power and the means at the subconscious level to begin to behave in a proper way and get more exercise. Then there are the situational insomniacs. And this is usually a direct result of stress in a person's life. Perhaps there is uncertainty at work. People are being laid off. People are being fired. Perhaps a new boss has come in or a new company has taken over the organization. Or perhaps there's a wedding or a move or house moving or whatever. And these situations are extremely stressful. Divorces, um, relationships ending, you know, problems with children. And stress is not just something that's ephemeral. There's actually a biochemical component to stress. So when we're under stress, there will be an elevated level of things such as adrenaline, cortisol, norepinephrine, and other hormones and biochemicals in the body that will be just flooding through our system. And it's very hard to fall asleep when we're in the stressed state. And here, hypnosis can speak directly to the physical body. There have been lots of studies where through hypnosis, we've talked to the subconscious mind and asked the subconscious mind to lower the volume of certain chemicals in the body, just to calm things down, to bring things back into balance. Now, there are also other complex issues that underlie the nature of insomnia. Insomnia can also be triggered by PTSD or some kind of traumatic event that uh, one has gone through in one's life, perhaps a robbery or an act of violence or a car accident. And we haven't properly digested this experience. And so it doesn't, uh, uh, so our subconscious hasn't been able to let go and work through it so that uh, it affects our sleep, it affects our dreams. And here again, hypnosis is very effective because of the subconscious dimension to PTSD and the fact that in the hypnagogic state, uh, we can better work through things at the imaginal level, work through trauma, work towards healing in a profound way. So we can work with the PTSD um, derived insomnia. And then there's the cases of those who've never slept well, ever since they were children. They've always had issues with sleeping. And so when people come to see me and they start to talk about insomnia, so I'd like to divide them into two streams. Is this insomnia the result of a lack of physical exercise? Is there some kind of dietary component, perhaps high in sugar? Is alcohol a component? 
on what's going on. Is this insomnia situational? Is it related to stress that's occurring now? Stress in the life, perhaps a divorce or something going on at work or in one's personal life? Or is this insomnia deep-seated? Does it go back to childhood? And if it goes back to childhood, usually there is some kind of psychologically traumatic event that underlies it. Some kind of event that happened to us as small children that made us not feel safe enough to go into the deepest states of sleep at night. Perhaps we wet our bed and we were punished severely for wetting our bed. So whenever our bladder gets to a certain level of fullness, we have to wake up and we go to the toilet. And because of the initial state and the fear and the panic around the initial state, it's much harder for us to go back to sleep. Or perhaps there was some kind of violence, sexual violence, physical violence. Perhaps there were alcoholic parents. Uh, the child didn't feel safe in the house. For instance, I had one client. His father occasionally drank, and occasionally when he drank, he beat his mother. And so as a four-year-old, he would stay awake in his bedroom until he heard his parents go to sleep. Now it had been years, decades, since he had been in the same home as his parents, and yet his subconscious mind had learned this faulty behavior. So there are many different reasons, many different approaches that can be taken towards insomnia. Another big one, and this can apply to all the different variants of insomnia. We cycle through various sleep cycles every night, um, where there's a, a sort of a light sleep, and then there's the dream sleep, and then there's the deepest non dream sleep. And often people who do have problems with sleep, they've gone to the sleep disorder clinics and hospitals where they want to determine if it's a result of your breathing and sleep apnea and where they can give you masks and uh, different ways to allow the airways to stay open. And those people, they can go to the hospitals and it is a medical issue. But there's another group of people, they go to the hospitals, they get hooked up to all the different sensors of the brain waves and whatever, and it's determined that they are unable to enter into the deepest, dreamless states of sleep at night. Now, the interesting thing is recent research on sleep has shown that the gray matter, parts of the brain actually shrink. In my mind, in the metaphor that I use with my clients, it's like a sponge. And the sponge squeezes out gunk and whatever in, into the passageways between the sponges, between the gunk. And the cerebral spinal fluid washes down through the brain in those deepest non-dream states of sleep and washes that debris away. So it's like the brain has a number of showers every night and those showers wash the brain clean and so this accounts for another category of people people who actually go to bed they get the six to eight hours of sleep a night but they wake up tired they wake up exhausted because their brains have not been properly cleansed they haven't gone into the proper non-dream states of sleep at night and again, here we can talk to the subconscious mind. We can provide the subconscious mind with images, with metaphors. We can show it pictorially what it's supposed to do. We can have a person imagine standing in the middle of the night in a lagoon on some tropical island with the stars above and a waterfall just flowing right into the top of their head and down through their brain and washing away all of the dark particles, all of the dirt that's in the brain. We can also imagine them going down through the different cycles of sleep and then back up through those cycles. So there are many different approaches depending 
on the nature of insomnia. But because hypnosis is the only therapy, and there are many, many therapies out there, but it is the only therapy that involves a direct communication with the subconscious mind. And when we're asleep, by definition, we are in a subconscious state. Our conscious mind is the words and pictures and the different thoughts that we have and everything else is our subconscious mind. Our dreams come from our subconscious mind. Our feelings, emotions come from our subconscious mind. So hypnosis is actually the only technique that really aims to communicate and to connect and to educate and to reprogram the subconscious. And because so much of insomnia and so many different variables in insomnia are the direct result of the subconscious mind, hypnosis is something that people should really consider, especially if they've tried sleeping pills, they've gone to the sleep disorder clinics, they've tried uh, changing their mattresses and doing everything. They should really seriously think about giving us a chance to help them. Healing mind, body, and feelings the Toronto Hypnotherapist.